They're awesome. Started watching Silicon Valley again, too. Love it. We're recording Unique New York, Alex Cora Center for Kids Who Want to Learn How to Read. No, hit whatever. I didn't even read that this year. So, welcome. This is the first one. You have the LePay brothers, less hair on one side, gray hair on the other. <laughs> How you doing, Adam? Doing terrific. Thanks for having me on. First one of the year. It's nice to talk to you above fifth place. <laughs> You've been saving that. <laughs> we were talking. <laughs> we were talking for like an hour, all nice and calm. Now it's fantasy time, and I just can't hold back. Now we're in. <laughs> I am though in third right now. Or fourth. Well, I'm, I think I'm tied in fourth. I actually I, let me see with Testa about Dave, who keeps sucking dick. <laughs> I feel like if I say anything about his team name, he'll like never change it. Not that he's given any effort to change it yet. D for hitting. Oh, you're in uh, seventh. Fuck. Well, then that joke didn't land as well as it did, huh? Or was it a setup just to bring you it. further down? <laughs> <laughs> I was in second, and then Keith had his way with me. So Keith had quite the week, too. So Keith's name, let's talk about this. Keith's team name. R.B. Bichette's Creek. I don't get it. So Bichette, Bo, but R.B., what is, is he trying Dawson's Creek? I'm assuming. There's a picture. I look less familiar with it. Oh, it's Schitt's Creek. He's going with Schitt's Creek. I thought it was a Schitt's Creek reference, but I don't know what the R.B. is. R.B. Bichette's Creek. I'm trying to say it fast to make sense. R.B. Bichette's Creek. Nothing. <laughs> Hear that, Keith? We don't get it. Is it like an are you going to the mall, but R.B.? C-O. <laughs> are you going to the mall later? Real quick, have you watched Hustle yet? Speaking of Adam Sandler? Hustle? Yeah. No. The movie shot in Man York, but No. Uh, He's like a Sixers recruit, like a recruiter for the Sixers scout. That's the word. Scalper? Scout. Scout. Yeah. Scout. How Good is point. it? Do you like it? Yeah, it's awesome. Tom keeps telling me to watch uh, that other one he got oh, an award for. Uncut Gems. Have you seen that? Great movie as well on Netflix. I have not seen it, Tom, still to this day. <laughs> is Tom here? I actually looked down to see if he'd fucking message us. I'm here somehow. <laughs> um, all right, let's 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 get into the meat of this. I'm fresh off a loss to Scott, so we'll read his name first. Scott's Tots, which is a, an episode I can't watch. Uh, unbearable. And he's in first by a large margin. Marge Largen. Marge Largen. <laughs> and... Mike, Mike was slipping. Let's be honest, Mike was slipping, but he catapulted up to second again. Um, he's playing seventh place Adam currently. But losing to seventh place Adam currently. He'll come back. Wham, bam, thank you, fam. RB Bichette's Creek. Now, now I'm mad about it. Third place. Me with a slight change. B. Cole, my babies, since Chad Cool has sucked. Suck it. Uh, speaking of sucking it, Testa, D for hitting, tied with me in fourth. I love Tom's team name. I It's so good. <laughs> I texted him that it was an all-timer uh, when it first came through. So, was, sir, this is an Albies with Will Smith yelling. Just, again, Tom. Just goddamn. <laughs> but, Tom, right now, currently in the last playoff spot, which is weird. We talked about we're in week 11. Yeah, already – at the halfway mark, pretty much. What's crazy is you'll like, you know, you're watching the scores up until that Sunday, right? You're really into your matchup. You really want to win. And then you have to like, I think we talk about this every year, but you turn the page next, next stressful week up. <laughs> Never catch a break too. That's what I like about this league is it's really competitive unless you play Kyle this year. You hear that, Kyle? <laughs> um, Drives a Prius. So you did a slight change too. I see your little asterisk here. So explain. So 
I don't know. I wish I went with a more modern, up to date dig at Trevor's story, which was the original spark that my team needed. Um, and my team names really helped Trevor Story become one of the best second basemen behind Tommy Edmond, who's also on my team, who's unreal. Um, you know, kind of a panic pick, to be honest. So he, he, I just switched it. It was great. Trevor, uh, Trevor Story to Trevor Rogers, hoping it would have the same effect. That man has yet to get out of the fifth inning, I think. And it's just hard to watch. And it's like, I know when I cut him, he'll be great. So it's the Blake Snell effect, really. Oh, wow. You have so many. Oh, you have a Taylor Rogers, too. I was clicking on the wrong one. Trevor. Taylor Rogers is great on the Padres. Oh, 5.87 ERA. Yeah, this is not your boy. But he you're was holding. last year. This is Marlins. Yeah, he was good. People are still holding him. He's at seven, 61% rostered. So people are still like you. I mean, that's how I am with Jesse Winker. He, I actually don't like him because of how bad he's playing. I thought I liked him in Cincinnati. And he hits I, home runs and like does like a little like pimps it. And I'm like, run, that's your third one this year. Run the bases. Just need the umpire from ECU out there. Yeah. Foul uh, time. Foul ball, double foul. <laughs> you get that? Fine. You know that? <laughs> What's the name of that movie? Semi pro. Oh God, so funny! Technical, <laughs> double double <Wait>. foul. <laughs> cheese steaks behind you, veggie cheese steaks always behind you. Kyle Schwarber though, two homers tonight. That'll be his two hits for the month. Are you talking? I can't. I don't know if I can hear you. Can't hear you. Just, just spin again. You spun last time, and it was really good. Here we go. Yes. He's back. Philly. How many Phillies does Lute have on his team? I'm counting. Let's see. He would have more. He didn't get real Muto. But Harper, who is awesome, and that hurts. Schwarber. Eflin. Three. Only three. Okay. I would does have Kyle guessed. have more? Kyle might have more. We'll get to you, Kyle. Once we get to that part of the standings, we'll get to you. <laughs> Before, unless our time limit runs out. Yeah. <laughs> Double burn. You go, Scott LePaid. <laughs> um, so, yeah, Veggie Chiste, I mean, he hits the hell out of the ball. His team. But every week I look at his ERA and it's hilarious. Except the week he played me. I'm pretty sure he had a great week. Loot, eighth place. Patrick. You had something tell his team name. It's a good one. Yeah, I think maybe Keith or, or Luke gave him a shout out in the WhatsApp, but it's really fantastic. And I love that he's really committed to changing it every week. And it's I hope that or pay attention to his four kids. <laughs> <laughs> I love him, though. Yesterday, what a great question he asked me. What do you want for Contreras? You have Wilson? Yeah, I said, why don't you go get the other one? He said, I didn't even know there was another one. <laughs> he also thought Ronald Acuna was a shortstop when we were talking trade last year. So. <laughs> I had to explain, no, he's an outfielder. Do you still want him? I don't know if you want him now. <laughs> but Acuna okay, has I'll made an impact. Bassett too. What's that? Fine, I'll just take Chris Bassett, too. You know okay. what? Throw him in. Throw him in. <laughs> and then the baseball gods hit a line drive off his fucking face and I couldn't have him the rest of the season. <laughs> and still won. He came back. He threw three innings in the championship against Paul. Scoreless. And Paul's... Paul had that guy that's really good right now for the Dodgers. Tyler Anderson almost had the no-hitter last night. Yeah. And I'll always remember he gave up seven earned runs on that Saturday night in the championship week. And Paul, do you remember that? Oh, wait, we haven't gotten to Paul. What? That's a surprise. Waiting. waiting. Why? Paul, come on, do something. This is actually hilarious for a team name. And he got the right picture in there, poking with a stick. Yeah. But he has struggled, man. Paul, what's yeah. happening? This is not you. This is not you, baby. The formula has been compromised. His hitters aren't hitting, I don't think. Well, he also has like Tatis, which I just read. He's not coming back anytime soon. So I think... 
It's probably a lot of guys who just refuse to get warm yet. He has Soto, who's batting 228. That's not good. No. He also has Lindor, who's better this year than last year. Hella RBIs and runs, but still batting only 240. Yeah, yeah. No, I've actually used the word hella over the last three days outwardly in front of the interns at the Marlins, and no one said anything, which actually makes me feel a little more (laughs) self-conscious. Dave's losing it. Did he just say hella? He has Cronenworth, who's really his best player. And when Jake Cronenworth's your best player, I don't know how. (laughs) But he plays three positions. He's good. I Cronenworth's a good player. Shouldn't oh, yeah. be the best. Shouldn't be their best, but he's good. Well, Manny Machado is the best on that team. Yeah. Not, and you also have Hosmer. You, you've, you. It's lasted on your team. Eric Hosmer has been on the team longest of his career. <laughs> <laughs> he's also doing his best to not be on my team anymore. <laughs> it's been like over oh, a lifetime. Dude, Alex Bregman, I'm not picking on you, uh, Paul, but I'm happy Alex Bregman can't hit anymore. (laughs) What an asshole. It's all because – I hope it's all because of Joe Kelly throwing at his head. Yeah. We need to – right now, if we could – if I had the time and ability to superimpose that little gif from the John Boy of Bregman's face, like, after that pitch went through (laughs) – and the clip too. John Boy's like, this guy's fucking crazy. Yeah. And he hasn't, you're right. He has not hit since then. No, he really hasn't. Um, Definitely not in the World Series last year. Boom. Except that one game, Duvall hit that grand slam. He had a bases clearing double, and I was like, oh, God, it's happening. And like Altuve and Correa were due. Yeah, it was scary. Correa is good, mm-hmm. but he was, he was hurt. No, he's okay. Who has him? Oh. Is it Scott? Scott? I thought Scott, maybe. Or maybe Chris. One of those West Coast guys. Speaking of West Coast, good segue. Like, we're brothers. LaPaid. Chris, 11th place. Could be could be worse, Chris. And you've been worse. <laughs> <laughs> but Chris was giving Scott a run for his money on that Monday, two days ago. Um <laughs> Scott's Tots has since taken the lead against Chris, but uh, we're pulling for you, Chris, because if anyone can take down Scott, it's not you. And last, but I don't want to say I'm not going to pick on him because I'm playing him this week and he'll probably beat me. But with a winning percentage of 381, coming in at 41 and 71 and 14, your favorite Turner. (laughs) Tom Turner. No, Kyle. <laughs> if Kyle makes it even this far in the podcast, I give him credit. Yeah, I actually agree with that. Um, he picked up Connor Joe yesterday, and he went four for five today. So, yeah, that's that's good for me. Teoscar Hernandez. Four homers on the year. Has hit two against me this week. <laughs> but, Yeah. He has Pete Alonso. That's a good player to have. This guy's awesome. 60 RBIs already. Oh, all right. Well, we did it. We went through our standings. Any surprises for you, Adam? Well, I was going to say that I was in the running and then found out I was in seventh. So that was not a surprise. Tough wake up call. Tough, tough one to hear. Paul is a surprise. Yeah. And actually, let's. Let's not let Keith escape the spotlight that Kyle's been in because Keith has been perennially awful. So it's funny. Yeah, you're right. Because this is actually factually based. We went through the the past. He, he just, now if Keith, Keith's now, that now's the time to turn off the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Keith, Lute and I went through the standings or how, the playoff standings for the, uh, we actually have been doing this for a long time, almost a decade. And, um, he has yet to make the playoffs. Keith hasn't made the playoffs. Um, Keith, you haven't made the playoffs. I just had to say it one more time. 
but he was determined this year. But I mean, he started off good. He was up there and then he fell. And I was like, oh no. And he was he was upset about that. But that I mean, last I'm not gonna pick on you, Adam, but last week helped him. Now I'm sure he feels a little bit better. He had a good line though. He's is this is Keith just living on an island? Because he when I try to text him, it doesn't go through and he only communicates through WhatsApp. He now has an iPhone, from what I understand. Now, is it an iPhone 4S? We'll never know. But, yeah, I mean, he is technically living on it. What is Vermont? He's doing, like, composting. And that's, like, a, you need to do that in Vermont. They don't, it's, like, not a, it's not a, hey, you want to do this? No, you have to do this. This is your garbage system. <laughs> it's a down payment on your home. So, yeah, he's living on an island. Um, he apologized. So yeah, that is a surprise, though. That was a positive surprise. See, we went negative with Paul, but a positive surprise is Keith. He texted me and he apologized in typical Keith fashion for beating me. Just moved to Canada already, Keith. He did say um, he had a good week, but he like apologized to me for beating you. <laughs> he said, I wish it was Tom or Luke. <laughs> me too. Me Same. too. Um, Another surprise would be how badly Scott's killing us. <laughs> we should look at his roster because I played him last week and thought it was going to go well. Well, no. Okay. Let me, let me say that again. I didn't think it would go well, but it started to do okay. Maybe a tie. Um, but he had Aaron Judge and Trout and you know what? Jazz Chisholm. They all had multi-homer games against me. Christian Yelich, for some reason, is hitting this year. Yeah. But, yeah, he's had, he has quite the t- – oh, and Jose Ramirez, you can't – that guy, let's just read his stats. Batting 307, 40 runs, 16 homers, 62 RBIs, and 11 stolen bases. That's like that, – there's no one better than that, right? Not that versatile, no. Jose Ramirez, I think, right now is the MVP. Well, judge, right? You got to go. And then he has both of them. Yeah, he does have both of them. I was sharing with you earlier before we started recording that also a fun fact is Jose Ramirez leads the league in the fly ball rate. So I wonder if there's any type of correlation there. Yeah, what's he – what do we say? How many homers? 16. So he's he's beating my team alone. <laughs> um, Mike Trout. 16 homers as well he's actually having a down year batting 289 42 runs 16 homers 34 rbis now he's not stealing bases at all zero so trout's definitely a different type of player uh i don't think his legs can hold up much longer is really what uh, aaron judge let me just read one more of this goddamn stats on his team Aaron Judge batting 313, 53 runs, 25 home, 25 home runs, 49 RBIs, and three stolen bases. Just when you think you can steal steals from Scott, nope. Aaron Judge is going to take three off you. And he has Rizzo, 15 Who's home runs. out of his mind as well. The Yankees are 30 games over 500. And the fact that if I could share shed one – light on the stat of Aaron Judge to make us all feel better as people is that he has 25 home runs and less than 50 RBIs, which is an indication that the Yankees will not go anywhere in the playoffs again this year. (laughs) Does he bat leadoff? Yeah, which is crazy to me. It's crazy that he hits leadoff too. But I guess that's a good way. Him and LeMahieu switch? Does LeMahieu bat? I don't know. LeMahieu's not hitting like he used to. No. Hmm, so let's see. Matchups this week. Let's go through it, unless you want to add anything to Scott. We were just blowing Scott. Scott's tots. All right, let's go through the matchups this week. It automatically goes to mine first. Let's do it. Kyle and I. It's closer than I wanted it to be. It's getting closer. We're back. Okay. Oh, you can hear me. Sorry. That's all good. Kyle versus... B. Cole, my babies, only because it comes up first. I mean, the best thing happening this week is my ERA is 0.36. So he had Gossman 
blow up today. And he went out on the waiver wire. So now we got Ranger Suarez going against me tomorrow. Should I be nervous? No, he started Sunday's game that we were at against the Diamondbacks. And I don't think he escaped the third. So you've got nothing to worry about. Tell us about that game. Was it fun? From what I remember, I think it was fun. It ended the Phillies' win streak, too. So there's always always great stuff in that. And we also ran into the mayor of New Egypt and Dave's better half, Dan Lewiler. Mr. Vegetarian Cheesesteaks, father. Yeah, that's right. Uh, that was fun. So it was, a cool, it was a cool time. It was fun to get to a Braves game or a baseball game. So Here's I'm gonna, an attempted joke. Did the Phillies have more wins in their win streak than Danny Lutweiler had hair on his head? <laughs> I, that did well. That was a good sentence. That was good, yeah. Um, so right now, 8-4-2, I'm beating Kyle, but he's picking up pitchers that can go anyway. Scott's Tots, 9-3-2 over Chris. Chris is beating him in home runs right now. Seven to three. That he has three wins currently. He's beating Scott by three categories runs, home runs, RBIs. It's only Wednesday. My <laughs> guess is those will change and we might see a shutout. We might. And also, it's Thursday. What? Thank you. Thank you for telling me that. Um, shouldn't go out drunk with your laser tag team. I wish I had a team of anything. <laughs> Let to be a part of one someday. <laughs> yeah. All right, come on, do some things. Out to a good lead here over Sir. This is an Albies. Um, eight two four. Now I always look. So Tom's ERA is struggling. I, I'm. I took a screenshot of the person he just dropped today. Alex Fido. Who lost 13 to nothing yesterday. So, I it's mean. It's not the first or second or third time Tom has picked him up and streamed him. And he finally got burned by the Fido. What sucks for Tom is Ozzy Albies broke his foot. So, that's like a two to three month injury. Um, who is his second baseman? John Birdie. Gross. He has 14 stolen bases. That's more than my team. But it's still John Birdie. Is Omar and Fonte available? Um, yeah, he is. <laughs> and Martin Prado. <laughs> uh, yeah, Tom, or Paul, just two for 16 today. Paul is has, streaming enough. He has Tyler McGill, who gave up four tonight, but he's off the hook right now. I'm watching that game. 4-4. Four, four. Looks like Kana went yard. It's 4-4? Four, four? Yeah. Ashby gave up four. Then what inning? Fifth, but now you got the trainer and council walking out to see Ashby. Are you talking as someone who owns Ashby? Yeah, I dropped him and picked him back up, and this is great. It looks – he's not – Council's shaking his head. We're giving you a play-by-play, -play, everyone. Council's upset. You can't hear him because it's on mute, but he's just not happy with what Ashby's telling him. Ashby does not want to come out of the game. He's saying, I'm good. Lindor's talking to fans in the front row, getting a – picture that's so weird isn't it front row guy just taking a picture of you right there while you're talking to him that's weird while your pitchers hurt yeah ashby's coming out you got a guy with a book out in the bullpen saying i i got i got no one i got no one ready <laughs> <laughs> they've been a disappointment they're somehow still in first place in the set i guess the cardinals might be surging but the brewers are or were in first place somehow they lost like eight in a row they played the Phillies and got swept during their streak but yeah the Brewers I mean they don't hit they're batting Lorenzo Kane, who's batting 170 yeah um 17 years 44 weeks till empty house <laughs> empty nest sorry Patrick versus vegetarian cheesesteaks this is a good matchup right here 
just looking at their batting stats, they're close. Tied in homers, a couple off RBIs and runs. High OPS here. Veggies batting over 1,000, 1.084, and then Patrick's 962. Wow, yeah. Patrick has zero ERA, and it's 24K, so he's doing really good. His pitchers are doing good. That is good, yeah. Wow. But he needs to hold on there. Maybe I mean this could be a, that's gonna be a good matchup. Lute's frustrated because his team rakes, but he's just struggling pitching. I think. Yeah, that's always the worst. You can never get it right. R. B. Bichette's Creek. It's been this for two years. How have we not questioned this? Now he's just keeping it to piss us off. <laughs> what is R. B. Running back Bichette's Creek? I can't. I'll just sit here in silence as I think about it. RB, RB, B. If he's going for, she, I don't know. Who cares? My yeah, what's so Bo? Bo? No, it doesn't even. What is it? Well, he's losing to Dick Sucker Testa. Uh, eight three three. Testa's having a good pitching week so far. Keith's not having a bad one, but. Of three five ERA. This will be a good one too. I'm sure Keith will start hitting. And then last one. Oh, on you. Ooh, looking good. Mike's pissed. Let's see. This is close though, Adam. Close, close. and especially in the offense, it's really close. It's close throughout the everything, but that means when you battle somebody who's in second place, I mean you you deserve to be up there. You deserve it. Thank you. Yeah, at least the rotor standings prove that, but <laughs> If we did Roto, I'd be struggling this year. I still don't know if I get it, but I feel like I must have if the way I drafted this year because clear, clearly I did something different this year to be yeah. in seventh instead of ninth. Yeah. Well, I think your your team is better. Let me look at your team. Better than seventh. I mean, Lords Guriel is the first name that jumps out to me. But he's batting 282. He just doesn't, he's supposed to have power. He's just not having power. You know what? Your Max Muncy is going to be your your second half guy. I know. I, and I hope his elbow's kind of fucked, but I was like really mad. I Once he went on the IL, I was really mad that I even drafted him. Me and Tom were talking about it. But I also think so. Like he almost has to be. And he walks. Like that's really his main thing is that he walks so much. Who knew we talked about Jesse Winker a second time, but his walks also are the only redeeming quality. Um, his high socks, too. I just hate him. I just, I, he's like, un, like, I don't want to drop him. He's one of those, you know, you're just like, he's going to get hot. Yeah. Um, Max Muncy batting 156. Now, he's always been like a 220 guy, but with like high walk rate. Mm. All right, Trevor Story, this is your boy. I'm skipping over Machado because everyone knows he's like the chosen one currently. To redeem ourselves, though, from shitting on Kyle, he was like the one who told me to draft him that night. So kudos, Kyle. But yeah, let's skip over him. That's Officer Kyle to you. Yeah, Story's, I mean, he's batting 223, but who isn't these days? Um, you know who isn't? Jesse fucking Winker. <laughs> Third time. <laughs> um, 42 RBIs, eight stolen bases, nine homers. I swear he had those nine homers in like three days. Yeah. But he's been quiet since. Is it like kind of ebbs and flows with this dude? Well, he hit, yeah, he had like a monster week. And kind of... Can they hear me? Who knows? I don't know. Are they going to hear me? Can you hear me? You can. Can't hear you yet. Three. There we go. Period. Again, Uh, every story. He was returning. He was, he had a breakout. It was like two weeks. He was mashing, kind of doing Kyle Schwarber of last year. And then he returned to a form today and went 0 for 5 with three Ks. So (laughs) that's the Trevor story I know. Oh, I see that. He's Jordan. Now, if there ever was someone who was so wrong, <laughs> it is I. Uh, 
not keeping Jordan, but keeping fucking Freddie, who has five home runs. <laughs> He's like, my number's five. This is cute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, Jordan, I got to read his stats. I do this nightly. He's like a judge one, though, where he, like, no Ashers are getting on base. However, he did just sign the lo- the biggest contract for a sole DH at, like, 115 mil. So he is living up to that. They play him a little in the outfield. You have the outfield designation, right? Yeah. But he's iffy out there, as we know from the World Series. He, he almost got that. What was that Solaire hit it? So when he, he had to, Solaire had to wait on it and still crushed yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So he's got – he's batting 312, 39 home runs, 17 home runs, 45 RBIs. And, like, multi-hit games. This is why I love this guy. Yeah. He doesn't really K that much. He's fun to root for. Yeah. May he br- may he bring you to a place slower than I in the standings, but <laughs> higher than seventh. <laughs> Your steal. Now, can it be called a steal if he's the top ranked prospect? But Julio Rodriguez, let me just do a little timeline here because you can do this on this app. All transactions drafted. drafted by Trevor Rogers drives a Prius. <laughs> Dropped by Trevor Rogers drives a Prius April 11th, April 13th. Added from waivers by Trevor Rogers by drives a Prius. So he, someone else did this with a player. Oh, uh, Keith did that with um, the Chapman? first base. Walsh, the first baseman for the Angels. Jared Walsh, yeah. Yeah. He dropped him and I put in a waiver claim immediately. And then somehow it works where you get him back. I don't know the rules there, but like you can get them back quicker if you drop them somehow. I don't, I think you like, is that true? I don't know. I'm just making fake news potentially, but I'm, it's happened a few times where like the guy who drops them gets them back without that wait period. Anyway, I noticed that earlier in the season actually, and that's maybe why I took advantage of the Rodriguez situation, but also he was like, being a rookie and was over four K and I was like, he's only owned in 50% of leagues. I pr- like, I'm pretty sure I could drop him, pick up a pit extreme to pitcher and pick them back up hoping for the literally this. And it's certainly paid off. You're playing with the devil. That was a, that's a game with the devil there, Adam. <laughs> I've tried to think ahead like that. And then someone steals that player and I just stare at my computer. <laughs> well, that didn't work. Um, your boy Ward Taylor Ward slowed down, but Got hurt. what a what a start! I mean, that propelled you in the standings. Him alone, I'd say. I didn't even know this guy, and he really him alone. He was hitting a home run every night. Yeah, you're you're pitching tonight, Blackburn. Decent. This guy uh, Martin Perez. So I've watched a couple of games he's pitched. For some reason, I watch Rangers baseball. Uh, they should be better than they are. Yeah, well, their Seeger and Simeon hadn't hit. Simeon was like 0 for 40. And then he started hitting. Seeger's least. hitting like 220, too, on I think Scott's team. It's gross. Scott's team. Fucking Scott's team. Um, yeah, Martin Perez. I mean, he gave up six earned last time out. But other than that, he's like a quality start machine. Doesn't walk people. This That's a good, good pick up there. I've gotten lucky with my pitchers. Him, Blackburn, Blackburn's been kind of sucking, but like Nicholas, all kind of doing their part. Not Ryu though. I mean, you're you're holding on to him here, but I think he's done for the year. Is he? I didn't. Re- I didn't get it. Unless that's a new update. Is it his elbow, Tommy John? He's done. I think he's done. I mean, I'll gladly cut him. I picked someone dropped him. Keith, Mike, maybe, and I was like, he's hurt. I'll just add him to my IL because that's not cheating per. The San Francisco Giants. Watch um, out. You're going to get bitch slapped. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know if they can hear me, but Ryu, you can hear me. Ryu undergoes season-ending surgery to address UCL damage to his left elbow.
And in this little commercial break, we're going to do miming. Who knows if they can hear me on this recording or you? Yep, I heard it. I hear you. All right. Here we go. Did you hear me? You're back out. Ryu is done for the year. I can't hear you. Say something. Say something. can't hear you at all i hear you i now hear you okay well this is going to be some recording for the people <laughs> um where are we at i don't even know where we're at with time but uh overall feel for the league this year how do you feel it's good it's um it's competitive like i said earlier which is really the most fun i think the whatsapp and the podcast could be picked up a bit um maybe this I'll could be our catalyst nice and i i also think um there was something else i wanted to say i don't know there's just not been enough smack talk there was last year there was a lot more smack talk going around so i think All right we're well enough tonight but we're asking for it too why don't you yeah yeah let's go through it again from the top uh <laughs> yeah i expect to hear some shitty texts soon um yeah, I think it's a good, you're right, it is competitive. It's like silent competitive. Every year, we're kind of like, everyone's just quiet-ish. And daily moves, even the last place teams, like, you know, keep trying. That's important. Um, I think it's a lot of fun. Scott's pulling away. We need someone to beat Scott to bring him back. Um, but overall, I think I'm, I'm, I'm pleased with this. This is great. Um, Let's do a little non-fantasy. Did you see what happened to ECU? So I think you and I have talked about the infield fly. Is that the foul ball that we kind of referenced earlier? No. Mm -mm. They lost in a super regional at home. But they were winning. They won game one. Game two, they were beating. It's Texas. They're playing in a three-game series. They were winning seven to two, Adam, in the seventh inning of game two. All they need, they win two out of three, they go to the College World Series. This dude, it's a fly ball to right field. The right fielder kind of misjudges it, falls to the ground. Uh, double, two outs, doesn't matter, right? Whatever. You get out of the inning. Next batter, two run homer. So seven, four. Yikes. Go into the eighth, seven, four. Dude hits a bottom of the eighth because Texas was home team in game two, the way it's done. And dude hits a three-run bomb to tie it, 7-7. Seven, seven. Wow. Next batter, solo shot, 8-7. Now the Pirates have one at bat to tie it, or they're tied at one. Yeah. Top nine, dude hits his home run on Whoa. the Pirates, 8-8. Eight, eight. And then the bottom nine, they we got two outs, bases loaded, and then they had like this little single to right that scored the tying run. So 1-1 one, one in the series. And then um, game three was like starting at four. There was rain. Can you hear me? You're still. I don't know if you can hear me. You went. So I now I can hear you. Okay, so game three start, supposed to start at four o'clock. Texas scores three in the top of the first before the Pirates even hit. I think they ended up scoring four, but then there was delayed again. They didn't start the game until ten fifteen p.m. After starting at four o'clock. So these kids are just chilling and they're down four runs. You come up to bat in the, I mean, they had to get out of the top of the first still. It was four, four runs. Yeah, it's wild. And they had to get out of the top of the first. They did four, nothing. They score one, but then they ended up losing 11 to one. Pirates lose a super regional. They were hosting a super regional for the first time in a while. Yeah. And they had it, man. Seven, two in the seventh. Like what the hell? How, how do you lose yeah. that game? Did you text Cliff? I texted him when he made the regional. And he said, thanks, but like, congrats. I did not text him. They won the regional to then host the Super against Texas. I didn't say shit since then. No. Mm -mm. Yeah. Um, have you been reading anything? Yeah, so I'm a bit of a weirdo. I like to read multiple books at a time. 
um, just kind of keep my interest in reading because if it's one thing and maybe I'm picking the wrong things to read, but also I just, it kind of sparks my interest to read different things at a time. So um, just finished Ender's Game. I highly recommend. It was a really like a psychological book more than sci-fi for me. That was cool. Um, almost finishing Slaughterhouse Five, which is a Kurt Vonnegut novel, which I never I've read knew, that. I never knew that name, um, but that's a really cool book. He's a dark writer. I read that book. I've read another book by him, The Dresden. Is that the one? Is it in Dresden? Okay, so that's the one I read. Yeah, yeah, it's dark. He also was a soldier during World War II, so he, like he was in Dresden. So, and he's a drinker and a womanizer, just someone to bring home to the family. <laughs> He, uh, he writes really well, though, and it's cool because it's like most TV shows at this point where nothing's shot chronologically. Mm -hmm. He kind of just writes ad hoc. So um, those are kind of the two things I've been reading now. And then I'm just, John's gotten me for two years in a row, the Nat Geo subscription. So I'm just doing a lot of that. And I just learned something about turtles today, sea turtles. If the, so they lay their eggs on the sand at the bottom of the ocean. And if it's, if the ocean at the bottom layer of the sand is, is cold, then all of their litter will be boys. And if it's warm, all the litter is girls, which is kind of fascinating. That is, you know, in Emerald Isle where we live, it's a sea turtle sanctuary. And both Christina's parents, can you hear me? You went, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. All right, so both of, both Christina's parents are on the sea, sea Turtle Patrol. Nice. Started as they were married, no longer married, still on the Sea Turtle Patrol. So that's that makes for some fun conversation. Um, but they both will like talk to us about there was an egg, there was there was a nest, we saw a nest. And if you could measure the level that Christina and I care about that, Wait, how can I say, what's the best way to say I couldn't care less? <laughs> Might be that way. Yeah. You pull into Emerald Isle and there's like signs everywhere. It's a sea turtle sanctuary, sea turtle, everything. And yeah, good. That's great. But there's other problems in the world that we need to address. <laughs> what about the sea turtles in Ukraine? Yeah. Can we talk about Ukraine for the last six hours of this pod? um i read two books uh i finished gone with the wind which was a 44 hour audiobook i don't know how you do that but kudos uh lifting weights listening to gone with the wind let me just say that's not the way to do it not the yeah, way yeah no we knew we all knew that <laughs> no need to sit no need to no have the experiment this chat lifts weights i don't think anymore and we all knew that yeah well maybe try it and then I read Dave Grohl's uh, Storyteller. Yeah, you sent me and Christina. I didn't know he was from DC area. Um, yeah. How was that? Pretty satisfying read, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. I love that guy. And I recommend watching his Hot Ones. It's so good. He gets the guy drunk. You saw it. You saw yeah. It. Yeah. And the dude turns into a huge fanboy. And he never really, like, breaks character. He's always pretty tight. Yeah. That is one thing I like about that guy. Um, but Dave Grohl, that so the book was written and the Hot Ones was filmed before Taylor died. Um, so it's a sad, like he talks about Taylor being his, like literally his better, his second half, like his best friend in this book. And you're just like reading it after he passed. You're just like, there's, there's a reason Dave Grohl, I don't know if he's come out publicly. I know Foo Fighters put something out, but I don't know if Dave Grohl said something. I know he, he's supposed to play in. Foo Fighters has a tour and they've canceled all their tour dates. They're just not even. And reading this book, you understand like how, you know, when someone writes a book about themselves, you're reading it and you're like looking into it kind of being like, yeah, I mean, that's not really how it went down. You can tell by the way you're saying it, you're trying to like paint yourself as like a great father, which I'm not saying he's not, but right. what he, the way he wrote some of his stories in this book, you're like, all right, man, just get to the point. Right. Right. Yeah. I but get that from Dave Grohl for sure. Bit of an ego, which, yeah. I mean, he's, 
his story is cool. It's one of the coolest rock stories, I think. I um I was gonna ask how much Taylor's mentioned in it, and I was assuming a lot, but also like I think if you think rock and roll now at this point, you have to throw Dave Grohl's name in there. And I mean, yeah, when you're reading it, he he was he did the um was it the Grammys? He played a Beatles song, a Paul McCartney song, while they played the Who Died That Year behind him. Mm-hmm. Um, Blackbird was the name of the song, and he he said how hard it is, and in front of that many people, he was still he still gets nervous. Like he loves playing music in front of people, but he was like that was hard. He almost said no to it. Yeah. Um, he's done a lot of cool things like that where you're like, well, he's actually appreciated amongst his peers. Just so sad, with yeah. Taylor. Just yeah, one of the saddest things. So surprising too. He's what fifty years old. Yeah, which is also surprising when you look that up. You're like, God, they're 52. I feel like a lot of guys have been dying. You know, like Julio Lu. Who? I heard Julio Lugo. Julio Lugo, if anyone can hear me, was a hitter for the Tampa Bay Devil Rays that I used to hate. Can you hear anything I'm saying? I was talking to you. I wonder if you heard anything I was saying. So all I heard was Julio Lu- and then he went silent. And I was like, Are, if you're referring to Julio Lugo, the last, he was a hitter for the Rays. I used to awesome. hate him in MVP baseball. <laughs> yeah, somehow good on the Cardinals and the Rays and the Red Sox. But yeah, I was mentioning he just passed too. Like I've just, there, there's been a really big uptick I've noticed in guys in their early 40s, 50s dying, which is scary. Granted, Taylor probably did some drugs, but. He was in Colombia. Yeah. Okay. Then confirmed did drugs. Yeah. That's all you need to hear. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> um, well, anything else for the good of the cause? I did have a cool stat, which I immediately thought of our group for. Um, so let me grab my phone real quick. All I right, can provide so... some. Oh, I thought I was going to do some elevator music while you pulled it up. No. Go ahead. Actually, we want to hear it. <clears throat> I had nothing. All right. <laughs> so, all right, ready. This is like I probably should have stat checked this, but then again, there's going to be all of 13 views on this, so maybe 11. The all right. So through their first 403 major league baseball games, Vlad Guerrero Jr. has 87 home runs, an on base percentage of 363. Pretty good. Yeah. Also in 403, in their first 403 MLB games, Vlad Guerrero Sr. had 87 home runs and an on-base percentage of 363. That's awesome. It's like incredibly uncanny, I think. I don't know who waited 403 games to wait for this. But whoever did it, thank you. Yeah. Uh, but that's insane. And, like, he looks – he hits just like his dad. He obviously doesn't play the same position. But, like, I, I think the Blue Jays are one of the most exciting teams to watch in general. But I think Vlad Guerrero has done awesome things for the baseball game. And it's just a really cool stat. So his – so Senior was a first ballot Hall of Fame, I think. Yeah. So we can successfully project at this rate – his son will also be a Hall of Famer. Yeah, dude. He's he's really funny. He's 23 years old, 24 years old. Mm-hmm. That team hopefully never gets blown up. It'll yeah. And reach a World Series, though. Or the playoffs, because they lost. They they had just missed it by a game last year. They were watching the scoreboards. Someone had to lose. They think the Yankees yeah. and somebody else had to lose. Yeah. So they didn't even make the playoffs with that team, but it's hard. I mean, look at their damn division. I mean, they'll they'll definitely make it this year with the expanded playoffs. And the Red Sox, I don't know if they'll make it, which is weird to say the Red Sox won't be in. Yeah, because you got the Rays, who don't lose. No. Um, we ha- we can't go off air without mentioning that our Braves are coming for your Mets. They're coming. They're hungry. It's not even July yet, so it'll be. It'll be fun to watch. I'm glad it's more competitive. I think having better competition in the East makes the Braves play better anyway. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
but yeah, 14 in a row, night game, like granted they just played the Nationals and the Pirates, so those are pretty much six easy wins when you're hitting the baseball like you are. But they had the Cubs, so could go well again, could keep going. The Cubs are like sneaky. I like to root for them, even though they're probably going to blow up their roster too. But um, they've lost eight straight. Did you see last night's game against the Padres? It was like 18 to five. That was them. Yeah. Padres are good too. They're hanging. They're better than the Giants. That's good. Giants will get it together though. Yeah. So, like, standing San Diego's in first, they're a half game over the Dodgers. Oh, wow. I did not know that. I did not know they were playing that well. The Cardinals are a game and a half over the Brewers. Just always good. Never – me and Kyle were talking about this, and I know we probably talked about it before too, but just never not playing well. The Cardinals? Yeah. Yeah. Paul Goldschmidt is out of his mind right now. That's true. And like Patrick. They fired Mike Matheny, which, I mean, for you and I, we were like, why are they – or not Mike Matheny, but whatever that guy's name was. Yeah, what was that guy's name? He brought him to the playoffs. Pat something? Back-to-back years. So he's on, He's like a bench coach for the Padres now, I think. Yeah, but it was so shot. Like, you're going to get – like, why are you getting rid of that guy? And they, clearly they knew they were doing something because they're playing even better now. Yeah, I don't even know who their coach is. Same. So the yeah. Cubs have lost 10 straight. So they're running into the Braves who have won 14 straight. So this could be fun. <laughs> um, Yankees – 30 games above they have 16 losses the next best team Padres they're so good so I'm trying to find this here so Dodgers have 23 losses you said the Padres are ahead of them they have 41 wins 24 losses yeah they're up by like win percentage points It can't be even close. The the Mets are the second best team. They're 41 and 23. Yeah, so both New York teams, actually. So the Yankees and Mets are the best teams. The Yankees have a 742 winning percentage. And the next closest team is the Mets with 641. So 100 percentage points better. They're, like, on pace to lose 50 games at this rate? Yeah. I also yeah. – I watched the cool John Boy a couple weeks ago. Maybe you saw it, too, that Tristan McKenzie, I think, was tipping pitches. Should I watch it? I yeah, it's, really, it's cool. It's, like, talking about the game within the game. So, like, you saw Musgrove and your boy Cool playing tic-tac-toe. Yes, I saw that one. Uh, Scott was at that game. Sorry to interrupt. Scott was at that game, and I was playing Scott. I had Cool. He had Musgrove, and he said, "If I catch a home run ball, I'm gonna ma- I'm gonna write our fantasy score on it and mail it to you." <laughs> Chad Cool got beat up that game and promptly dropped by me. Musgrove is seven and zero with a one six ERA. It's amazing. And then, um, yeah, he said. So Scott said, if he watches this, which we'll see, he said that he got up to get a drink or something. And a home run hit his chair. No way. He said Machado hit a homer, and it hit his chair. Because he sent me a picture where he was sitting using the home run seats. So, had he caught that ball, I said, you would have dropped it. No big deal. But, Just like a double play. <laughs> <laughs> but he said he was going to mail it to me. That almost came to fruition. I, I mean, I would have probably had to quit the league, give you the reins. Could you imagine? And it would all have been at the expense of Manny Machado, like one of the my, the guys I hate to root for until he's on my fantasy team. Yeah, I love. Can we just talk about too how five years ago Machado made such a big fucking deal about being a shortstop and he's played third base since? I think that's what a twelve-year, three hundred and fifty million dollar contract will do for you too. Shut whatever, up. whatever. <laughs> I'll do. I'll play wherever. DH. Yeah. Do I have to play? Can I just live in San Diego? Dude, is you know, he's only 29 years old and he's setting records. So he, he's actually one of those players that's like an all-timer, potentially. Yeah. He plays another eight years, ten years. That's great. Well, there's the kiss of death on my seventh place team. See you in ninth place very soon. <laughs> um. All right. Well, I think this was successful. Yeah, it was fun. We'll have to do it again. I know we'll probably get more guys on. 
More guests, more internet speed. More internet speed coming to you from Suddenlink. <laughs> what do you use your internet up at Comcast? Yeah, brutal. We are Spectrum. Yeah, also brutal. They're all brutal. Anyway, we'll uh, I'll send this out tomorrow. Um, yeah, cool. uh, and then, yeah, thanks. This was fun. It was fun. Yeah, good to, good to chat baseball. I haven't done that except to Django. So. Yeah, and he seems interested. <laughs> <laughs> Django, quick. Jesse Winker, do you start him? Bark twice if you're in Milwaukee. All right. <laughs> I'll start him. Yeah, all right. All right, we'll talk to you later.